It is uh, the greatest privilege and uh, pleasure to introduce our next speaker, his beatitude, Patriarch Louis Raphael Sacco. He is the current Chaldean Catholic Patriarch of Babylon, the head of the Chaldean Catholic Church, ordained a priest on June 1st, 1974. He undertook the pastoral service at the Cathedral of Mosul until 1979. Sent to Rome, he attended the Pontifical Oriental Institute, where he received his PhD in Eastern Patristics. He later received a second PhD in history from the University of Paris, and he has since published several articles and books on the Fathers of the Church. Upon returning to Mosul in 1986, he was appointed parish priest of the Parish of Perpetual Help. From 1997 to 2002, he held the office of rector of the Patriarchal Seminary in Baghdad. He then returned to Mosul, where he took over pastoral care of the parish of perpetual help until his election as Archbishop of Kirkuk on September 27, 2003. The Synod of Bishops of the Chaldean Catholic Church, convoked in Rome on January 28, 2013, elected him Patriarch of Babylon. On February 1st, 2013, Pope Benedict XVI granted him Ecclesiastica Communio, Ecclesiastical Communion, as a sign of unity with the wider Catholic Church. As Archbishop, Patriarch Sacco has promoted religious tolerance and cooperation along with other religious leaders in Kirkuk. Of course, Patriarch Sacco comes to us as the leader of a Christian community that has experienced horrific suffering and at this moment faces a threat that is nothing less than existential. Yet his beatitude is a man of gentleness and humility, and he is a man of hope. As he underscored in a meeting yesterday in which I had the privilege to participate, he underscored that he remains hopeful hopeful for his country, and hopeful for his people. At the same time, his beatitude is a person of courage, candor, and forcefulness. This is the second conference in two years, co-sponsored by Georgetown's Religious Freedom Project here at the Urbaniana, and at the first conference, perhaps the most forceful and memorable remarks were delivered by his beatitude, Patriarch Sacco. He said then, on December 14, 2013, quote, we sometimes wonder, if they kill all of us, what would be the reaction of Christians in the West? Would they do something then? Would they do something then? Now more have been killed, more have fled. And what are Christians in the West doing? What is the West doing? His beatitude is still asking these insistent questions. And yet he made clear then that he was not asking for a mobilization to protect Christians but rather for Western efforts to support, quote, harmonious societies for all human beings, based on, quote, a civil state in which the only criterion is citizenship grounded in full equality under the law. That was his Beatitudes hope in 2013, and I know it remains his hope even under more dire circumstances in 2015. Please join me in welcoming his Beatitude, Patriarch Louis Raphael Seiko. Chaldean Catholic Patriarch of Babylon. The answer of uh, Christians, of Iraqi or Syrian Christians to persecution is clearly our faith and our hope. Maybe you, you have another answer, but for us, this is our force. The situation of Christians in several countries of the Middle East is degrading. Persecution Christians has become a phenomenon today for several reasons. First, the culture that Christianity is a religion of love, forgiveness, and peace, which is against the current culture of revenge, taking revenge. The second one is the secularization has become a religion in the West and the vacuum of religious values in Western society. 
Third, the corruption of several regimes in the Middle East and the lack of real reforms. Fourth, the mistakes of Western policy in the Middle East in changing regimes for worse. Dictatorship is a culture in, in the Middle East. So what we need is a fair dictator. If we want to change the mentality for democracy or freedom, we, have, we need another culture. We need time and many efforts. Fifth, five, the lack of formation in democracy and freedom and human rights. Six, the instability and the lack of security. Seven, the rise of Islam with the goal to establish an Islamic state according to Islamic law as it was in the in seventh century. Many Muslims think that Christianity has failed and they have the mission from God to Islamize the world because Islam is the true religion. Today's situation of Christian in the Middle East, but especially in Iraq, Unfortunately, religion, religious freedom is under attack in several countries of the Middle East. Daesh, ISIS, and extremists attack Christians, Yazidis, and Sabians because of their belief. They destroy anything that does not fit into their vision of Islam. Leaders, leaders of Islamic State have established three rules of trade with no Muslims, forcing people to convert to Islam, to pay a, a, a tribute, jizya, or to leave their house, or to be beheaded. In one night, 120,000 Christians left their homes with their clothes, and now they are living in campus since one and a half year is not a crime against humanity. Constitutions based on religious or sectarian motivations are also incompatible with the values of human rights and especially the liberty. Political Islam tries to impose with sword to impose an Islamic systematic law Al-Sharia, which does not allow legally the non-Muslims to have a real participation in the political life and to have equal constitutional rights as Muslims in the administration. Today, everything in Iraq has been sectarian. We always we speak Shi'i, Sunni, Kurds, Kurds, Arabs, and Christian, Muslims, and so on. The recent law approved by the Iraqi parliament on October 27th is a coercion against Christians, Yazidi, and Sab Sabian, Sabian, children below the age of 18 uh, years, forced to convert to Islam when one of the parents proclaims to be Muslim. This is contrary to the, to the values of citizens and damages the national unity and its religious pluralism and the principle of coexistence. Militias in Baghdad, 54 militias, are also threatening Christians in Baghdad, Basra, kidnapping them, Christians, Yazidi, and others, for getting money to pay a, a big ransom and forcing them to leave their houses in order to occupy them. No Muslims have little hope of a better situation in the region. The violations push Christians and other minorities to emigrate and consequently to uproot themselves from their motherland where they were identified to. Before the collapse of the old regime, the number of Christians was about 1,400,000 persons, and today they are around 400,000 only. 
some propositions. I would like to present some concrete proposals. They may serve as a roadmap to a better future in the region for Christians and others. One, Daesh, ISIS, and fundamentalism are a cancer in the Islamic body itself. They are a danger for Islam, but also they pose a real threat to all. Therefore, we all together must destroy it military with the troops. We need the troops on the ground. On, bomb, with, the, with bombing, there will be no solution. And defeat it ideologically in drying up the source of, of funding, weaponry, and feeding jihadist sectarianism and all other forms of extremism of hatred and violence must be condemned and eliminated. Second point, the government has the duty to guarantee a real understanding of relationship between citizens of the same nation and individual freedom without fears reforms in the political sphere should establish a civilian system based on the principle of citizenship and equality. Third, the government should criminalize and punish all of the activities related to the contempt of religion and its holy symbols, not only Muslims, Christians, and others and forms of discrimination, spreading hatred and division. Four, Islamic religious authorities should take their full responsibility in dismantling the takfiri ideology by providing moderate programs of religious teaching, purifying them from hellish ideas, and respecting differences and strengthening the bonds of goodwill among citizens and spreading a culture of harmonic social coexistence. Maybe we need a universal ethic against xenophobia and fundamentalism. The religion, Muslim religious authority, until now, they didn't issue any uh, fatwa, not only to condemn ISIS, it is easy to condemn them, but also to condemn the uh, extremism. They condemned the, act, the actions of ISIS, but not ISIS. Fifth point, the international community through United Nations should issue decrees against those who are committing such injustice against religious minorities. Those who are financing and supporting this terrorist ideology. They must be brought to the international tribunal. Sixth, freedom of religion does not mean that the state should be secular, but a state with an official religion that would assure the basic rights, including the individual right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion or belief without discriminations. Christians and other minorities should leave the protected minorities, minority status to become full citizens. We are not dimmi, as they said. So we are not second category of citizens. We are equal. We were there before the arrival of Islam, and we stayed. And now we want to be equal to them. So to, the separation, I think, the, the separation of religion from the state is basic. Personally, I think the only chance to build a better future for all is to separate religion from the state and to establish a civil state away from the logic of a state governed by one religion or one sect. Our society is composed of multiple religions how one can live out his doctrine of faith when he is, his religion is a second class. 
the importance is that one has to be a good citizen. Religion is a personal matter between man and God, and the belief in and in any religion should come out of his conviction and not of coercion. So the freedom is for all. It is not only for Muslims. It's for every single person. This is a right, a basic right. Conclusion. To achieve this goal, governments, religions, and people of goodwill all over the world should involve seriously to preserve the strength uh, to preserve and strengthen religious indivisible indivisible freedom that allows people to think express and act upon that they freely and deeply believe freedom is a basic and fundamental human rights for all it is not a favor or a monopoly of a religion or sect or ethnic group or of the majority Religious freedom benefits every single person on earth and creates good conditions for a peaceful coexistence between citizens of the same nation. We Christians assert our attachment to our country, our homeland, and we respect and love our Muslim brothers. But similarly, we want them to do the same thing for us. Thank you.